Hello and welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently, Steamforge Games acquired the Iron Kingdoms brand from Privateer Press, along with everything that entails. Already, they have announced a new plastic starter set for War Machine, and they have run a Kickstarter for Strange Light Workshop, an Iron Kingdoms RPG supplement. But for painters, one of the most exciting aspects of this deal is the return of the popular P3 paints range, which is being relaunched through a Kickstarter campaign that goes live on Tuesday the 10th of September 2024. And I can see this campaign being huge. In total, Steamforge Games will be offering 100 paints, plus some special add-ons. No inks or washes, just 100 regular paints and metallics, including at least 25 new colours that are being added to the range for the first time. There will be three pledge levels for 10, 50 or all 100 paints, and backers will have the choice of dropper bottles or pots. You will find a link to the Kickstarter page in the video description below, and you can sign up right now to get notified on launch. In preparation for this campaign, Steamforge Games have been sending out samples to select creators, and somehow, I managed to find myself on the list. This is quite an honour because these samples have been going to amazing painters like Ninjon, and while I do a lot of painting here on the channel, viewers will know that my aim is always to do things quickly and easily so we can get painted miniatures to the tabletop as soon as possible. Now, I am a creature of habit. I almost exclusively use Citadel and Army Painter paints because I know them, I know what I can do with them. But I am not opposed to trying new paints, so when I was offered the chance to give P3 a whirl, I was very keen. I was sent 19 colours in total, the first thing I did was put together a colour swatch to get a better idea of what I was dealing with, and it's a pretty decent spread of useful colours. A couple of greens, some blues and reds, a couple of flesh tones, brown, yellow, white and black, and four of the metallics. Two of the colours did catch me off guard. Immortal Black is actually grey, and Boiler Black is actually a dark gunmetal metallic paint, but everything else seems straightforward enough. So, I want to put some of these paints through their paces, and to that end I am going to paint this griffin. This magnificent beast is from the Local Legends Griffin Encounter Pack, which I reviewed on the channel a little while back. I am a huge fan of the whole Epic Encounters range, particularly the Local Legends Encounters and the associated Tavern Kit, and I thought trying out the new P3 paint samples was the perfect excuse to finally get some colour on this lovely miniature. And, as I mentioned before, here on Always Bored Never Boring, the aim is almost always to get good, clean tabletop results quickly, and today will be no different. After all, I am a creature of habit. My hope is that someone who has never painted, and who is concerned it's all a bit much, will see what I do here and think, that looks pretty straightforward, I can do that. You will note, I have sprayed the miniature with a black base coat. This will obviously give us a surface to work from, and will set a suitably dark tone for this monster. Most importantly of all, it will give us a good base to showcase the paints and their coverage. And I am going to start with Rock Hide, which is a lovely deep rich brown colour. I am adding a touch of water because it's quite a thick paint and I don't want to clag any detail on the miniature. And then I am going to apply this over all of the griffin. It goes on really well, very smooth. This is what we have after just one coat. The coverage is really impressive. Even though I thinned it, I'm not going to apply a second coat. That being the case, I will move straight on to painting the body. For this, I'm going to mix Heartfire, which is a bright yellow, with some of the Rock Hide. This mix is around 3 to 1 with a touch of water added, which I felt was close to the yellowy brown I wanted for this coat. The Heartfire doesn't cover quite as well as the brown. This needed two coats to get a good, solid coverage. Two is what I would normally do, and what I expect. Next, I am going to use Marrow White, which is a very pure white. Again, I am thinning this with a little water, but the white was already quite thin, and as I am applying it over the brown, you will see the coverage isn't amazing. I applied two coats, which still isn't enough for a solid white layer, but it is enough for what I intend to do in a moment. Then I am going back to that Heartfire Yellow, and this time I am adding some Midland Flesh, which is a really nice pinky flesh colour. A 3 to 1 mix of these paints is going over the forelegs to give them a yellow finish with a hint of fleshiness. Two coats is enough for decent coverage, and the griffin is already starting to come together nicely as we apply these base colours. Next, I want to paint that tactical rock on the front and any other rocky elements of the scenic base. For this, I am using Immortal Black, which has a very confusing name because it's actually a mid-grey. Two coats of this, thinned of course, provides the coverage I am looking for. We have just one more base colour to go on, and that's the green on the ground. 
For this, I'm using Blindwater Green. It's a very dark forest green, and even thinned, it provides decent coverage. With that done, we have all of our base colours on. Next, we need to do some shading, and because the P3 range isn't going to feature any washes or inks for now, I have two choices. I could reach for a few of my old favourites from another paint range. We all know how much I love Agrax Earthshade, I am a creature of habit. But I am going to do the shading simply by thinning down some of these P3 paints. For the wings, I am going to use a really thin down Thamar Black. Paint thinned with water isn't going to flow the same way as a wash does, and we may end up with something a bit patchy, but that's okay for these natural feather shapes. I'm simply going to slosh the paint over the wings to darken them down and help to define some of the fine details. I will put this black over the rocks on the base as well. If it starts to overflow too much, you can just use a dry paintbrush or a paper towel to soak up the excess. And then we are going to have to sit on our thumbs while it dries, which will take a little while. Once it is dry, I'm going back to using the Rock Hide Brown and I'm going to dry brush those wings. This is simply a process of loading up a brush with paint, wiping most of that paint off on a piece of kitchen paper and then flicking the bristles over the raised details of the miniature. This will leave a fine dusting of paint without covering up the shading in the recesses. That rock height is far too dark to leave as the final highlight, so I will then add the smallest dash of the Midland Flesh and I will do another dry brush. And you can keep repeating this process until you are happy the highlights pop enough or you are just a bit fed up and want to move on. Next, I need to do some more shading, so I'm going to thin down some of the rock height. I'm going to run this into the recesses all around the white feathers on the griffin's head. I'm going to line it into the creases of the forelegs, and I'm going to line in the definitions on the muscles on the body. And I don't need to be too neat about this, I will be coming back and neatening up everything later on. Oh, and I will also slosh the thin down brown over the green parts of the base. That will muddy things up and add some variation to the uneven surface. Then it's back to waiting for everything to thoroughly dry. Put the kettle on, you've earned it. At the moment, our griffin doesn't look amazing, but we are getting closer to being done. We need to do the final stages to tie everything together. For a start, we are going to use Marrow White to do another dry brush. This is going to be all over the feathers on the head. You may need to do a couple of layers of this to bring the whiteness back up. Be careful not to dry brush any of the surrounding areas. Use a small brush if necessary. And while we're here, we may as well do the eyes. Always the worst bit. We are going to brace the miniature, take a deep breath, and carefully dot in the eyes using Heartfire. Then we can use Thamar Black, take an even deeper breath, and dot in the pupils. If it doesn't work out the first time, you can always go back with your Marrow White, paint over the eyes, and start again. A small brush, a steady hand, and practice will get you there. Then we are going to need to build up some layers of colour on the forelegs and the body to smooth the colour transitions and add some highlights. I am starting with the body, and I have mixed up the same colour I used previously, that 3 to 1 mix of Heart Fire and Rock Hide. I am thinning this down a lot, and I am going to paint over the body without going into the recesses. That will create a transition from shadows to highlights. As I go, I can gradually add a little more Heart Fire, and focus more and more on the most raised details like the top of the back with each progressive layer. I don't personally worry about source lighting or directional lighting, I just try to brighten up what naturally seems like the most pronounced parts of the miniature. And the number of layers you apply is entirely up to you, just stop when you feel you are happy. We are then going to do the same process with the forelegs, creating our mix of heart fire and midland flesh, and carefully painting the raised detail to smooth out all of that shading. We can also use our immortal black to layer up some colour on those rocks on the base. And now we are getting somewhere. Just some fine details left. For the tips of the talons and the beak, I'm going to use Rin Flesh, which is a pinkier skin tone than Midland Flesh. I'm going to add the tiniest amount of Heart Fire and Rock Hide, and I will apply two thin coats of that. I think that works pretty well for things like beaks. I am happy with that. But something I am not happy with is the wings. They definitely need some additional highlights, so I'm going to take some of the rock hide and I'm going to mix that with heart fire to brighten it up and give it a warmer tone. And I'm going to use that for another few dry brush passes, adding a spot more heart fire each time, just so we can really see the details in those feathers. Phew, 
that just leaves the rim of the base. I would normally do this with a black or brown, but let's try out one more of the P3 paints, Sanguine Base, which is a sort of dried blood burgundy colour. I will apply two coats of that to the rim of the base, and then I can cool this miniature done, besides from applying a matte varnish to protect the work. Initial thoughts on these paints are, yeah, they're good. The formula is smooth and consistent, and they go on really well. In most cases, just one or two coats provided the solid coverage I was looking for. The colours are vibrant, and there was no obvious patchiness as I put down layers. Only the white seemed a little too thin. Obviously, I only had a very limited selection here, so had to do some mixing to get the colours I needed, but with 100 paints in the full range, you can expect to see slightly different shades of important colours. Look at Arcane Blue and Meridius, or Midland Flesh and Rin Flesh, for example. Having those variations can really save time, as it reduces the amount of mixing you need to do, and it will lead to more consistency across large collections of armies when you are sticking to a particular colour scheme. The only thing I didn't get to do when painting the griffin was try out the metallics. I tend to stick to the same few metallics when I am painting, so it is interesting to see what the new P3 range has to offer on that front. We can do that now, using this old Citadel miniature. This happy chap was spray undercoated, but the undercoat missed a few bits of detail, so I gave him the once over with Thamar Black. Now I am going to use cold steel to paint his sword and chainmail armour. As normal, I have thinned this slightly, and this is a very nice bright steel colour. It goes on really well, very smoothly. What you are looking at here is just a single coat, which isn't too bad at all. For the rest of the armour, I thought I would give Deathless Metal a go. I mean, I am painting an undead soldier. This is a dark coppery bronze metallic. It seems a little thinner than the cold steel, but the usual two coats is fine, and the finish is really rich and glossy. I like that, and I think I could well be using this for lots of skeleton armour in the future. But I'm not going to finish painting this piece in this video, although at some point I will post the finished job on my Instagram account. For now, I think I better sum up. I honestly can't say I'm going to rush out and order a set of P3 paints immediately. I have a lot of paint already that I should use first, but I'm certainly going to continue using the sample colours I have here, and as my paints run out, I may consider looking for alternatives in the P3 range once I've seen everything on offer. And if I find a few colours I really love, I'm sure to go back to them again and again. After all, I am a creature of habit. Remember, if you would like to check out the P3 range for yourself, there is a link to the forthcoming Kickstarter campaign in the video description below. But that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.